Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. Uh, so yeah, this may be a big surprise to you, and honestly, I wasn't even sure I was going to do it. Um, but the movie was released um, digitally. It is on YouTube, um, like officially on YouTube, to rent or buy. And I decided, you know what? Why not? Um, I have the I, I have a little bit of extra money right now. Um, I'm good on food at the moment, so it's not like I need to worry about that. Um, so I'll I'll spend six dollars to rent this movie and react to it. I've been reacting to the Harley Quinn uh, series. And so, yeah, why not uh, watch the movie? Uh, I was really excited for this movie. It is sort of a pseudo-sequel to 2016's Suicide Squad. Um, it still stars Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. And from what I've gathered, it centers around, well, kind of the same thing as the Harley Quinn series. Harley's life post-Joker. Except while the series focuses, still focuses plenty on the Joker as a character, and uh, more on Harley trying to make a name for herself. This, from what I know of it, focuses more on Harley having to deal with another villain who has come after her now that she's no longer under the Joker's thumb. And that is Black Mask. Uh, Black Mask is a classic Batman villain uh, known for the black skull-like mask he wears. He's a crime boss. Um, and he is being played in this movie by Ewan McGregor, who, th who's going to be really interesting in this, because I'm used to Ewan McGregor playing good guys. I'm used to him, like, being Obi-Wan Kenobi. I'm used to him, like, in Moulin Rouge and whatnot. And it's like, so it's going to be interesting to see him as a straight-up villain. Um, now this movie is also Birds of Prey, so we have other characters who take a good focus in this, such as Black Canary. We have Huntress. We have uh, Renee Montoya and a couple others um, whose names I cannot for some reason think of right now. I think one is Cassandra Kane, though. Either way, uh, so a lot of people uh, prior to this movie coming out were talking about how it's basically a girl power movie. And yeah, from everything I've seen of it, it probably is. Um, even a lot of the advertising had Ewan McGregor's Black Mask kind of seemingly portrayed in a not just a negative light because he's a villain there I mean Harley's a villain and she's the main protagonist but still more so in like yeah he's probably gonna be misogynistic he's probably gonna be an asshole to Harley and not take her seriously because she's a girl or even just because she's not a serious villain kind of like what the series is doing with her um that's the kind of vibes I got from it. Um, I don't know how much of that is true. I don't know because I, I don't know much of anything about this movie, like about what actually happens in it. I've seen the trailers. That's it. Um, I've heard some pretty, pretty positive stuff regarding the film. Um, a lot of people seem to really like it. A lot of people think that it's basically taking the right steps after Suicide Squad which, as you know, most people didn't like. Um, people think it actually took the right steps and was pretty good. There are some detractors, though. There, of, of course, there's some people who don't like it. Uh, I've heard some people say it's too much feminist propaganda. I've heard people say all kinds of shit like that, that it's, it, it's trying too hard to push uh, SJW bullshit. So, I, again, I don't know the exact context behind those or why these people have been saying that. Um, but that definitely makes me think there's going to be a sexism angle here. Um, but yeah, um, this was also a movie I was going to see in theaters originally. I was actually going to see it with my grandmother. But then the week that we were going to see it is the week that everything was shut down here in Michigan. It's the week that really the quarantines and uh, shutdowns really began uh, 
like coming up really began uh, going strong. And because everything shut down, obviously I couldn't go see it with my grandmother. Plus, obviously, even if I could, I probably wouldn't have because, you know, it's my grandmother and I don't want to risk anything happening to her. Um, so yeah, we never ended up going seeing it. And then they ended up releasing it digitally, I think early. They released it early, uh, earlier than planned, which, yeah, makes sense considering it was just in theaters. Um, because of this entire uh, pandemic, and I, I've been wanting to check it out and just haven't. And so, yeah, when I saw it was on YouTube, I said, you know, I, I'm doing a reaction series to the show. Why not just react to the movie as well? Um, but yeah, as, as should be obvious, this is not like a donation reward. This is not anything like that. This is something I am personally choosing to do. Th this is something that I want to do. It's a reaction for me. <laughs> um, and I'm excited. Like I said, I, I've been super excited to see this movie. I, I've always been a big fan of Harley Quinn, but um, this I, I'm one of the few who actually really loved Suicide Squad. I, I, like, I really loved it. And so I'm excited to see more of Margot Robbie as Harley. I'm excited to see the hyenas. At least one of the hyenas is in this. There's at least one, because uh, that was shown in one of the trailers. I'm excited uh, to see the other Birds of Prey, especially Renee Montoya, who in the comics, I believe Renee Montoya is a lesbian. So it, it'll be interesting to see if they portray that. Um, but I'm excited to see Black Canary. Like, I think this is the first non-Arrowverse, like, big screen adaption version of Black Canary we've had. I don't think she's been in any other movies or whatnot. Um, again, I'm not counting the Arrowverse TV show. Um, and, um, one of the characters, the young girl, I know she's played by Ella J. Basco, who is the cousin of Dante Bosco. Um, Dante Bosco, or Basco, or however you want to pronounce it. <laughs> um, I don't know what the actual pronunciation is, um, but he is the voice of Zuko from Avatar The Last Airbender. He's also, um, Rufio from Hook. Um, he, he's just really awesome. Um, and so his he, he when this was first announced, when this casting was first announced, Ella J. Ba Ella J. Bosco was announced uh, in, in this movie. He was making a big deal out of it on social media. Like, he was really proud of her and really just pushing, push, pushing her out into the spotlight. He wanted to make sure everyone, like, that followed him knew that she was getting this role. Um, and hey, I mean, that's awesome. <laughs> um, I'm really interested to see uh, what she can do. Um, the trailer looked fantastic. It really looked uh, pretty interesting. Now, Joker is definitely mentioned in this. But obviously he's not going to show up. I don't know if they're going to see any form of Batman in this. I, I don't know exactly how far this is going to go. Um, there's just a lot of questions that kind of go into this, like, how how far is this going to go? How many of those classic characters are we going to see besides the main cast? Or even just hear of? Uh, like, will we hear about Jim Gordon be mentioned at all? Or Harvey Bullock or any of the other uh, police force? Um, I mean, it's a valid question considering Renee Montoya is here. Will we hear about any other villains besides just Joker and uh, Black Mask? Um, and, and will he even go by Black Mask during most of the movie, or will he just go by Roman Sionis? Um, like, it, it, I mean, how how late into the movie will he actually don the Black Mask? Because all the all the trailers I've seen have him without it, so it's like. That's going to be interesting, because in the comics, I believe, the mask was actually grafted onto his face, basically. It's like, it, it, it became, like, part of his face. He couldn't take it off or anything. So, it's like, it doesn't seem to be doing that in this movie. At least, not at first. Maybe that, that does happen. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, I'm really excited for this. Um, and funny enough... This movie was actually supposed to be a, uh, just a fun fact as well before we get this started. 
This movie originally, when it was announced, was actually announced as a Gotham City Sirens movie, which if you don't know, Gotham City Sirens is Harley, Ivy, and Catwoman. Um, it was announced as a movie for them, but they changed it uh, while, while things were still very early on to Birds of Prey. Um, and I'm, I'm not really sure why I would have, I mean, everybody would have loved to see a uh, Gotham City Sirens movie. People were really excited when that was announced. Um, because even, even with those who didn't like Suicide Squad, they still liked Margot Robbie as Harley. Like, she was still pretty, that was still one of the most positive aspects for most people of that film. Um, it, it's like, she did a good job as Harley. Even the haters have admitted that. But it's like, that's what, people were really looking forward to that, uh, to see a, a new, big screen Ivy after the last one being Uma Thurman, uh, who did not go over well because, you know, that entire movie kind of was a bit of a train wreck. Um, but then um, we'll, we'd get a, another big screen Catwoman, the first one since uh, Halle Berry's failed attempt at recreating it, um, which isn't really Halle Berry's fault or anything. She was just the actress, but still. Um, but then they changed it, and it's like, it's a little disappointing, but again, from all the trailers and all I've seen of this, it looks good. It, it's it, it's just going to be a fun movie, I think. Um, so I'm excited to see it. Now, since this is being watched on YouTube, there m might be some uh, little issues with, um, what's it called, lagging? <laughs> um, because, you know, YouTube does tend to have that problem sometimes when I react to movies from it and all. Yeah, only movies, though, too. So I don't know if, like, the movie player, the video players for movies are is different or something. Then, it like, when I've reacted to longer stuff, like, just general, like, videos or the Mauler reviews or whatever, it's, like, it, it's never had that problem, so I don't know. But, yeah, just warning you ahead of time that there might be a little bit of lag. Hopefully it's not too heavy. Um, hopefully it doesn't interfere with the movie. Um, and so, yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't really have anything else to say regarding this going into it, because as I said, I've stayed pretty much spoiler free, um, as I do with everything. I, I don't know much of any of the details regarding it. I've only seen non-spoiler rev uh, reviews here and there and only really short ones too. Um, but yeah, I, I'm very excited. I, I, I this is just, it's got the makings of a fantastic comic book film. Um, and hopefully it's as good as the movie I watched last night. <laughs> um, last night I actually watched Pan's Labyrinth for the first time, and that was a really surprisingly fantastic movie. Um, I did not expect it to be as good as it was. I, I obviously, completely different type of film than this, but still. Um, I'm just hoping, like, okay, two for two on movies uh, this week. <laughs> Let, let's get this going strong. Okay, but yeah, we're just going to get this started and hope for the best. So when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then it fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the movie. So that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. Okay, and we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1... Now, okay, so, uh, first thoughts, fantastic movie, I loved it, um, easily, easily one of my favorite, uh, superhero movies currently, um, I don't know exactly where it would rank yet, I'd have to really think that through, um, but I did look up a few things, be uh, between recording and every, or between the reaction and recording these afterthoughts. Um, first of all, Renee Montoya's superior at the GCPD, I s could swear that was the same actor who played Rufus in Supernatural, and I was right. It, it's the same actor who played Rufus in Supernatural, and it's like, I knew I recognized him. It's like, <laughs> I, di I did not expect that. <laughs> um... Another thing I wanted to look up was uh, Renee Montoya specifically because I had heard going into this movie 
that uh, she was going to be portrayed as gay, as a lesbian. Um, I didn't know, obviously, how much it would go into that, but I, I didn't know, like, if they would just mention it or if it was going to actually be a plot point. Maybe I missed something during the movie. It's very possible, knowing me. Um, but I didn't hear anything mentioned of that at all. Um, but when looking it up, apparently, um, oh, what is the name here? Let me get that up. Uh, the district attorney or whatever, Ellen E., the one who betrayed Montoya in the end, apparently, uh, she was Renee Montoya's ex-girlfriend. Okay. I don't know where it told us that or even kind of hinted at it. I, again, I might have missed something or something might just be completely escaping my mind. I don't know. Um, but either way, yeah, it's just like, it feels really like kind of random uh, or not random, wrong word, uh, really kind of like subtle, I guess, if anything was there. It, it, they they seemed more like they were friends than anything in, in the portrayal. Um, on top of that, uh, while I was looking that up, apparently I saw some stuff that was saying that uh, before the release and everything, apparently it was saying that Black Mask, Roman Sionis, was also supposed to be openly gay and that he and Victor Zaz were supposed to have like some kind of romantic sexual tension kind of thing going on. There were, like, there was, like, one moment, I think, where I saw that, where it's, like, Roman was just completely going, like, off the walls. He was completely losing his, his mind. And Zaz calmed him down and everything. And it's, like, that's the only moment in the movie I could see that could kind of hint at that. Um, but otherwise, it's, like, again, it's, like, nothing was really, not only just not stated, but nothing was really there to kind of even heavily infer that. Or even notably infer it. Um, also, the entire thing with uh, apparently Black Mask supposing to be sexist or anything. It's like, that never came up. I mean, there were a couple scenes where he was extremely gross and terrible to women. And definitely didn't take them seriously. Treated them like shit. But, again, it was subtle. It, it was more. It was more subtly handled. So it's like people have been saying, like people have been saying after seeing this movie that it's like some kind of SJW propaganda film. It's like where? I've seen a lot of other movies that are a lot heavier with that kind of shit. A lot heavier with that kind of shit. And, and don't get me wrong, I, I I have no issue with the entire girl power. Uh, kind of thing. That that doesn't bother me. There were little bits and pieces of it in this film, like the fact that obviously uh, Montoya's uh, superior kept taking credit for her work and uh, everything, and he moved up while she remained a detective and shit. Th there were definitely little bits and pieces here and there. And it was definitely a girl power movie. Like, that. that's undeniable. But it seems like a lot of people are really over-exaggerating it. Um, a lot of people are acting basically like it was preachy, and it wasn't. It was very much not. It handled it in a very subtle, held back, and uh, I guess you could say respectful way. It, it wasn't shoving it in your face. It wasn't preachy. It, it, it was fine. Um... Yeah, now uh, let's talk about the characters. So Harley Quinn was Harley Quinn. She was fantastic. Margot Robbie continues to just knock it out of the park with her. Um, yeah, it's just like, obviously she's not going to have the voice as spot on as like Arlene Sorkin originated it in the uh, animated series. Or even others have like even kind of mimicked that uh, accent and style like Tara Strong's interpretation of Harley. Of course, uh, Margo, Margo's never been able to fully capture that in Suicide Squad or now in this. 
But I don't think that's really that big of a deal because she still gets the character's personality and uh, traits and stuff down pat. I like the fact that she was basically narrating the movie and uh, kind of in Deadpool style broke the fourth wall and everything. Uh, how there were points where it like rewound back in time to like get everything back on track and get everything caught up with the story. Like I like that kind of stuff. Um, and it, it definitely wasn't even as strong and, and as... Uh, notable as with Deadpool. It was definitely, again, more subtly handled, uh, though it was still very much there. <laughs> um, Helena. Helena was great. Like, I loved how she had, like, very little uh, inter social interaction skills um, to, the, to the point where she was so socially awkward when, when interacting with everyone. Um, especially when it got closer to the climax in the end. Uh, again, when she really did start interacting with everyone else. Yeah, it's just, she was so awkward and it was hilarious. She's, she's a badass. She, she was a badass and was doing some awesome stuff as a vigilante, but she was definitely super awkward. But I love that. I think it was really cute. Um, Cassandra Kane, this foul-mouthed, uh, little brat of a pickpocket. Um, though in the end, you could clearly tell she wanted kind of to form a connection with someone. Um, she clearly had some issues in terms of her family. It, it was it was only shown really in one scene and kind of like hinted at in others, but it's very clear that her parents, her foster parents, um, not even her real parents, her foster parents, um, don't really want her around and don't really care about her. They, they were fighting and arguing, screaming about it. You heard her foster father yell, like, like, I want her out of this house and shit like that. Um, so it's clear she wasn't really fully cared about. Um, and when she connected to Harley, it's like, they didn't even do much. But they kind of formed this bond of kind of like these outsiders who have been scarred by people just kind of not caring about them. And so they kind of bonded and cared for each other in a way. And so by the end, when Cassandra Kane becomes Harley's uh, apprentice, it makes sense. It works. Uh, and even the part where they kind of have that little spat because Harley makes the big mistake of trying to uh, trade her and everything, which Harley admits was a terrible, terrible thing to do. Um, though, again, Harley is still a bad guy, and we still have to acknowledge that. <laughs> um, but point is, it's like, clearly, it was like, yeah. Uh, it, it felt natural. It felt like it was just a part of them, of their learning to bond together and trust others and everything. They were having that trouble still. Um, then you had uh, Renee Montoya, and I'll be completely honest, she was one of my favorite characters in this film. Um, I, I don't mind at all that she was portrayed as a bit older in this movie compared to how she is in the comics. In the comics and uh, animated uh, features and stuff that she's shown, and she's usually portrayed as pretty young. Um, but I like how, I, I, I don't mind at all how in this she's portrayed as a bit older, a bit more experienced. She's still just as much of a badass. She's uh, still, she's actually really funny with the entire 80s cop kind of shit going on. I love the shirt, the I shaved my balls for this shirt. That is fucking hilarious. No joke, that is fucking hilarious. And, and she's so open about wearing it, too. She doesn't give a shit. Um, and, and I like how, in the end, she finally just, like, said, fuck it, quit the GCPD, and uh, became a member of the Birds of Prey. Um, and, yeah, it's just, like, I just really liked her personality. I really liked her convictions. And... Honestly, I thought she was really, really just likable as a character. 
And in the end, when she's interacting with everyone, especially like at the little cafe and stuff, and they're just, they're laughing and like messing with each other and shit. It's like, okay, that was really fucking funny. She's just, I love her personality really shining there. And I won't lie. Um, when when we saw like her briefly in uh, the like old uh, style sexy Harley Quinn top, um, which was bulletproof and saved her from the gunshot by Roman, I would admit she's she's kind of sexy. She she's kind of fine. <laughs> I won't argue that. Um, she's she's definitely got a sex appeal to her. Even outside of that, uh, even outside of that obviously sexy moment, yeah, she's definitely got a sex appeal to her. Um, in a way that surprisingly few of the other characters in this do. Like Harley Quinn, yeah, I mean Margot Robbie's attractive, and yeah, her look as Harley is definitely so as well. But she doesn't really come across as a sexy character. It, it just that's not how her character comes across in this. And neither does uh, Helena Bernelli as Huntress, even though she's wearing, like, all this leather and shit. It's like, that's just not how her character comes across in the way she's written and portrayed. The only other one who would come across that way is Black Canary, um, who I'm going to get to in just a moment. Um, but it's like, Renee, I, I don't even know why, because most of the movie is like she's not dressed in any sexy way. I guess it's just the way she carried herself. The confidence, again, the conviction. Just the badassery of it all. Just something about the way she carried herself was sexy to me. I don't know. Um, but yeah, let's talk about Dino. Let's talk about Black Canary. So Black Canary is an interesting character because throughout most of the film, she's working for Roman, um, first as a singer, then as a driver. You could tell she's clearly uncomfortable with a lot of what's going on, but as she puts in the movie, he got her off the street, and he's been uh, he's been giving her a job and a life, basically. So it's like, yeah, it's like she has purpose with him, but eventually she can't take it anymore, and she betrays him to Renee. Um, now, like. Both like and unlike Renee, she does have that sex appeal. Her sex appeal is more in her her outfit, let's be honest. Her, while Renee's sex appeal is very much in how she carries herself and her personality, um, Dinah's is more in her appearance. She's just, she's sexy. She's a very attractive woman, the actress who plays her. Um, and the outfit definitely highlights that. And granted, again, she was a singer. She had this kind of appeal while working for Roman that she had to kind of, you know, well, appeal to the patrons of the club and everything. Um, and probably to a point Roman wanted her to appeal to her as well. Um, appeal to him, you, you know what I mean. He wanted to... He. he clearly had a certain view of women that he wanted to uphold, let's put it that way. Um, in, her, in terms of her personality, again, she clearly had a sense of morality, but was not really afraid to go, again, to go against Roman and everything. More so, she didn't want to ruin the life she had. She felt a, a sense of stabili stability. She had a sense of stability, um, and, and she didn't want to lose that. So it wasn't so much fear as it was uh, a conscious decision to just keep that stability, keep that... Uh, which, in a way, comes back to Harley, because that's, for a long time, why uh, one of the big reasons why she wouldn't leave the Joker and everything. Because it was stable for her. It was it was something. It gave her a sense of purpose. Um, and it was the same way for uh, Dinah here. She had that sense of purpose while with Roman that she didn't want to lose. 
Um, now, most of the movie is spent, like, building all of the characters up to where in the climax they all do come together and start to work together as a team. But most of the movie, it's like, okay, so you see bits of Helena here and here and here doing her job as Huntress, uh, taking out all the people who have wronged her. You see Renee Montoya trying to catch Harley, trying to uh, find casts and everything. And it's like, you see, you see it all kind of connecting uh, bit by bit. You see, of course... Um, Dinah working for Black Mask. You see her interact with Harley, and that's how most of it's coming together. Harley is the one connecting them all. Well, and Cass. Harley and Cass together, really. Um, they're the ones kind of connecting everything together and uh, pulling everything from a, sep from a bunch of separate stories into one climactic finale. And it did feel like a climactic finale. It, it, the climax was really well done. Not only them starting to work together and everything, but just the moment that Roman dons the mask. It's like we saw it briefly at the beginning of the movie, but then at the end when he finally dons it in the movie, like for real, and everything's starting to go down at, uh, at the former uh, amusement park and everything. It's like, yeah, this is great. This is a climax. This is how it should be done. On top of that, with the entire way the movie went back and forth and uh, a bit uh, to kind of catch up to all the stories and everything, it was actually paced really well. It, it didn't feel like it went by too fast, but it didn't feel like it was too sluggish either. Um, it felt like everything was at the right point and nothing kind of felt out of place. Nothing felt really rushed or, again, really slow. It just felt... Right. It, it, it just felt like it was paced properly. The writing was great. The char the way the characters, especially the story itself, was... It, it worked. It worked, in my opinion. Um, the soundtrack was fantastic. So many great songs in there. Um, the costume design, obviously fantastic. Um, just all in all, I really, really loved this movie. I really did. Um... Would I say it's the best portrayal of any of these characters? Maybe not. Maybe not. It's hard to say. Like, with Harley, probably no. <laughs> just just being honest. Um, with Harley, Margot Robbie, I love Margot Robbie as Harley, but it's probably not the best portrayal. Probably not the best portrayal of Cassandra Cain, especially with how different this portrayal was. Or Dinah, or Helena, or Renee. But, even so... This was its own thing, and it was trying to be its own thing. Um, it, it really wasn't trying to be other versions. And I like how uh, we got brief glimpses of the Joker, and in this, it's, it clearly wasn't meant to be Jared Leto's Joker. So it's like, this is kind of like, it's a pseudo-sequel to, to Suicide Squad, but at the same time, it's also kind of its own kind of soft reboot. So that's interesting. Um, Oh, Black Mask, Ewan McGregor was phenomenal. I almost forgot to talk more about him, but he was phenomenal as Black Mask, as Roman Sionis. Um, Yeah, he just did a fantastic job as a villain, and a very unstable one, too. Like, usually Black, Black Mask is portrayed as being very serious and very um, mentally stable. So it's definitely, again, it's another case of a different take on his character. Um... And, and I thought it worked. I thought Ewan McGregor pulled it off fantastically. Definitely a lot different from what I'm used to him with, though. Again, Star Wars. You have uh, the Christopher Robin movie. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, it's like, this is not what I expect from him. Um, but, I mean, hey, a lot of actors have definitely gone out of their typical wheelhouse and done fantastic jobs with it. Uh, I mean, one big example of that would be the movie One Hour Photo starring Robin Williams. It, that was so different from pretty much all of uh, Robin Williams' other works, and yet he was phenomenal as, basically as a bad guy, as a creepy stalker. 
One Hour Photo is fantastic. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's one of Robin Williams' best uh, roles by far. Um, but yeah, I really, really love this movie. It really helped uh, just, just really bring in that fascinating, high-energy comic book movie that we, we needed. The MCU has a very particular style to it, and it's like, it's just, it, it's great. I love the MCU, but it gets a little old at times. Like, you, you get used to it, and after a while, it's like, okay, I want to see something different, though. Not just with the animated stuff, because the animated stuff, obviously, is going to be different. But I want to see something different with the live-action stuff, too. And the DCEU has done that excellently. Stuff like Aquaman, stuff like Shazam, Wonder Woman, Justice League, this, uh, Suicide Squad before this. Like, yeah, they, they definitely are, so, they're very different from the MCU in terms of their tone, their style, the way the characters are portrayed, the way the stories are portrayed. But I think that's a good thing. It sets itself apart, and I, I it, it makes these characters come across as fresh and interesting and cool. And I, I still, it still comes across to me with all, all the people who complain about the DCU movies, especially the likes of Batman v Superman and uh, Justice League. It just, it comes across to me as people like, oh, this isn't the MCU, so uh, it's bad. That's how it always comes across as. Like, all their issues are pretty much boiled down to it's not the MCU. It's not doing things like the MCU does it. Because, unfortunately, as it is, and again, as much as I like the MCU, the MCU has kind of become a lot of people's single, like, viewpoint of what a superhero movie should be, and that's not a good thing. The MCU does a great job, but we shouldn't have a singular view of what a superhero or just, I guess, comic book movie in general, should be. They should be allowed to do their own thing and be their own, to have their own identity. If we're just constantly judging all comic book movies based on a singular style, a singular point of view, a singular um, a point of reference, then yeah, we're never going to be satisfied. I'd rather go into the movie and see it for what it is, not for what it could be or what uh, this other movie or this other franchise did. And, I mean, hey, maybe that's why I haven't seen as many issues with a lot of these movies, even on rewatches. Maybe that's why I enjoy them more than a lot of people do. And in a lot of cases, most people do. I go into them judging them purely on what they are and what they, how much I enjoy them. And that's it. And for me, that's enough. And this movie was fantastic. I thought it was a brilliant, uh, brilliantly directed, brilliantly written, and brilliantly acted film that, yeah, was definitely a girl power uh, film in a lot of ways, but also wasn't shoving that kind of shit in your face. It was well handled, it was respectful, and it, it was cool. It was cool, it was badass, it was sexy. Yeah, I loved it. But tell me your thoughts down in the comments below. What did you think of Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of one Harley Quinn? Uh, tell me your thoughts down there. And uh, yeah, just as a reminder, this by no means uh, means that we're done with Harley Quinn on this channel. We're going to continue the series, obviously. Um, that will continue on and future stuff will possibly happen as well. This was just something I really wanted to do, something I was excited to see, and I thought, you know what, why the fuck not? Let's react to it. Let's have some fun. 
and it was fun. I had a blast. Um, I do apologize for some of the lag and shit that was happening during it. Um, that always seems to happen when reacting to something on YouTube, a movie specifically, when you rent a movie on YouTube. I don't know why. I don't know why it happens specifically with movies rented. Um, but yeah. Um, so either way, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. And for now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.